Hello, and welcome to this video series on cost-benefit analysis. In this first video, we'll quickly introduce the difference between looking at decision-making from the perspective of a private firm and from the perspective of a larger society. And hopefully you'll start to get a feel for what a cost-benefit analysis is meant to do. So let's say you had $1,000 and you wanted to find out if you could make more money by mining some sort of mineral deposit under a forest. How would you make that decision? Well, easily enough, you could find out how much it costs to do, find out how much money you could earn and see which number is bigger. So in the beginning, let's say it takes this much money to get started. And after a year, this number represents the labor costs, the equipment rent, just all the costs of running a mining operation for a year. But you'll make this much for selling a year's worth of minerals. And let's say this is a 10-year operation. Each year, you spend $245 and you make $500. Spend 245, make 500. Spend 245, make 500. And then after 10 years, adding everything up, it looks like you'll come away with almost $1,800. Since you started with 1,000, you made an additional $795. So since you would increase your money over that 10 years, you should do it, right? Well, not necessarily. Just because you can make money at something doesn't mean it's the best idea. If you picked up some little rocks, went into town and sold those rocks to the kind of people who would buy rocks, you would probably come away with more money than you started. But maybe you could have spent that time doing something more productive and made even more money. So we need to compare this decision, this project, against others. The whole point of this cost-benefit analysis we've been doing has been to decide whether it was a good idea or not, or what are other options we could go with. So typically, you would want to at least compare it to doing nothing. You know, what if you just put that money into a bank at, let's say, 5% interest for 10 years? If you could make more money by investing it like that, there would be no point in trying to put that money into a mining project. So let's say because of interest, your money could grow by 5% a year, and after 10 years, it would be this much money. Since this is less than the mining project, it's starting to look like the mining project is actually a good idea and you should do it. This kind of analysis is called a financial analysis or financial cost-benefit analysis. It's what you would do if you were a single firm or individual trying to maximize your profits. You would just be looking at the money coming in and out of the company. But let's look at a slightly different situation. Let's say you work for the town and there's some sort of mineral deposit under a forest nearby that you might be able to make some money on. You've got $1,000 to get started. What do you do? Well, same approach as before. You're collecting costs and benefits trying to find out if you come out ahead compared to doing nothing or doing other options. You're trying to put everything into quantifiable dollar values to find the best project or best decision. Just like in the previous example, you will look at whether the mining operation itself is going to make money, but you work for the town. You're not just concerned with how this project affects one firm. You're concerned with everyone. Is everyone going to be better off? So what are some of the other things we would need to consider? Well, first of all, you have to decide, if not a single firm, then whose perspective are you considering? Which people involved are paying the costs and which people are getting the benefits? Will new jobs in mining reduce unemployment, saving the town money on assistance and policing? Would the town lose access to lumber, fuel wood, and other forest products? Will noise affect the town or surrounding wildlife? And you would also want to look much more into the future, especially for mining. Does the forest grow back? What about tailings ponds, the places where they put all the toxic uneconomic mining products. How long will that be there? Will any of this affect the drinking water supply? What if there's some rare bird within the forest that would definitely go extinct if mining took place? Are there any other alternatives other than mining for using the same land? Maybe instead of starting a mining operation, they could turn the forest into some sort of maintained conservation park that can attract tourists. And how big is the analysis going to be? Or how many people is the analysis going to include? Is there another town that's close enough that you might want to look at that? Different decisions and different projects might affect the entire world. For example, if you're going to start including things like global warming. This type of analysis is called an economic cost-benefit analysis, or social analysis. Where a financial analysis deals with how decisions affect a single firm, an economic analysis looks at the larger economy. You look at all the people the project will affect to see if it's a sensible decision. Who's going to be included in the study? Which different alternatives? of decisions you're going to look at, which scenarios you're going to consider, and how far into the future you're going to look, are all things you'll define before you start a cost-benefit analysis. This series on cost-benefit analysis process will take you through how to make these decisions, what to look at, what pieces to put together, and how to analyze different projects. 